Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Uh, today we're in Cochise County, Arizona, on a grazing project we've been working on this week. And I just wanted to kind of highlight how to build our uh, rope gates. So this will be a hot gate, and uh, this is the actually a road that goes through the farm. And uh, we've run about uh, 4,000 feet this direction of uh, Timeless. We have Thomas fence post on 25 foot centers. And then they're terminated on our uh, fiberglass corner post. Now this corner post is in the ground 40 inches. And we actually took an auger and dug a hole. You couldn't drive them out here. The ground's just too hard. So we, we dug a hole 40 inches, 9 inch diameter. And then we filled it full. It was three bags. Three bags. Three bags of sackcrete. Let it set overnight. And I'm telling you, it's like a tree in there. It's just not going to give. The beauty, of course, of fiberglass is they don't rust, they don't rot. You don't need an insulator. You can just fasten right onto the post, which is a huge, huge deal. And uh, you see this black wire coming up right here. So this is buried wire. It comes down in this trench. And we actually augered uh, a trench underneath this, this road. But when we did, we put it in PEX tubing. So each one, we're running a ground wire and a hot wire, both. Both of those go through that PEX tubing and it's sealed in uh, caulk to keep the dirt out of that PEX. So the PEX goes all the way underneath this road. We've got an inch and a half high density polyethylene water pipe in that trench as well. And we went under the road. I was concerned about the road because it's so hard crushing our water pipe that we put it in a steel pipe. So we got a two inch heavy wall steel pipe under this road so you get road traffic because we're going to have a crowd over here to load livestock you drive across that you're going to crush that water pipe so if you got a road on your farm make sure you put it inside a steel pipe so we brought each one individually up to post this is the ground came up here this is the hot and then our post spacings <coughs> you can follow me down here Dan <coughs> we actually uh put the timeless in on 25 foot centers if you look down that fence line it, it made a really nice <coughs> attractive fence it's very uh well it's just problem free we've got flex in our in our times you can see how the post flex right here if you put the camera right here jam when i'm pulling on see how they flex so if a deer or a cow or whatever runs into them you don't have to worry about them snapping off uh, the ground out here was hard enough that we actually used a water jet over here. So you put the water jet on the ground and just blast the hole back down in the ground. And then you set your post in there, tamp it in with a, uh, a five pound mallet. Uh, that's the only way to get a post in out here. <laughs> this is some really, really hard land. So right now, I'm, what I've done is I'm getting ready. We're going to have a wire coming here going back to the road that's our power source down there so this wire coming into this corner post from the blacktop that's going to be our feeder wire that feeds this whole farm so what we have is a 480 acre property we have this fence going down the middle of it and the property is shaped like an L so we're coming right down the middle of this way and right down the middle going back and we're going to strip graze it with temporary poly wire fences and each one is going to have its water point. We got water every 500 feet. So we put in a quick coupler. We've used them all up. But, uh, you can go to another, I've got another video where we actually put them in. That'll be showing up or maybe it's already, it may be before this video. I'm not sure which. But when you click in that coupler, you've got water. It's that simple. So it's a great way to move your water tank. You don't need to have water in every paddock. With a tank, you'll have one tank one float valve and, and one hose that's it so when you move your animals you just dump your water and go to your next tank or your next tank site and plug it in so now we're to the gate folks we were, we're only going to have one two we got two gates on this whole operation and what we've decided to do on these long runs like this this thing is well, this particular one right here is 2,000 feet we're going to put a high tension spring so that the, the grazer, he's going to put a bar on the front of his four wheel. He can hit this fence anywhere he wants 
and he can actually drive over it. See, I don't have any springs on this yet. And I can still almost push it to the ground. If you put a spring in the middle and you hit that with your four-wheeler, it'll actually, the wires will give enough. You can have a gate anywhere you want on your farm. But this is a road gate. So the only time this gate would be closed are when the animals are in this section. The rest of the time, you just leave it open. But you gotta have a gate here to keep your animals from going hill, yonder, and everywhere. So I'm gonna show you how we do it. So this is our turbo, this is a, what they call poly rope. And uh, we've already got our hooks on here. Now this hook is hooked into this high tensile wire back here. So I'm just gonna go around it like that. I usually go around it twice. So I've got two wraps. <clears throat> and I just bring it around. I tie my slip knot in there. Get it tight, yeah, and I pull it back. Now, the the more you pull, and I don't need that big a knot in there. I'm gonna there. Uh, okay, I'm not gonna leave all that on there. It just looks kind of tacky. Just take your side cutters, whack that off. Okay, there's takes a lot of time, doesn't it? <laughs> it didn't take very long to do that. Okay, now I'm gonna do the other one. So I'm gonna come up here, go around it twice like that, put my slip knot in there, pull your slip knot up tight, push your slip knot up, get your, uh, like that, I've got it good and tight, take your cutters, snip off your excess, like that, and we have a lighter, I'm gonna actually burn the end of that just to keep that from fraying, <clears throat> we can do that in a second. Now we've got this end tied, we're going to go over to this side where the handle is. So on this side, uh, what I did is I have a uh, three-quarter inch fiberglass rod. And what I did is I put a hook in down here. And this high tensile wire is actually drilled into that fiberglass corner. So again, that's just my hook. And in Missouri, we actually call what I'm putting in here a gap. This would be a barbed wire. I mean, there's hundreds, thousands of them. Old timers use these even in the West. They're called a barbed wire gap. Or we're using poly rope. Put that through. And this is my hook on the top. Okay. Now, when you open this, see how I've got that? It's staying in its own place. <clears throat> you don't want this loose enough it comes down and does that. Because <laughs> that's energized. Okay. You're going to get shocked unless you do this. So when you open it, that's why I like it to have that type of friction. So I'm gonna put it in the bottom, put my end down like that, okay? And now I'm ready to tie my wire. And Grant, if you wanna hold that. So I'm gonna tension my first one, put that up out of the way. You pull it through like that. Look how tight that is. Okay, and then I'm gonna go around my post and over around the post, I go around it three times. And then again, now this, on this end, I don't tie a slip knot. I, I bring it back and I tie an actual knot, like that. Just, and I usually do three of them. Like that. I've got the rope, I'm gonna put four in there. There we go. Ah. Okay. I'll cut that off in a minute. Now I'll do the same thing on the top. <clears throat> Pull it up tight. Okay, Grant, you can let loose. See, I've got good tension right here. And you look back across here, you don't want to sag in your post. Or I'm sorry, in your wire. So now I'm ready to go around it. My, I go around it twice. Like that. I'm ready to tie my knot. When you tie that knot, you can't let this slip or your wire's gonna get loose on you. There's one, two, three, and four. Okay, yeah. On this end, I'm gonna leave a little bit more, about an inch there, whack that off. Whack that off, and now I'll just burn the ends, keep that from fraying. There you go. And 
<laughs> yeah, we do have to burn the other end. There's that one. This was kind of a little bit more fuzzy. Just a little bit of breeze out here. There we go. Okay. Yeah, this, this wire was left on here intentionally long so that when I hook on here to go to the road, this is gonna be clamped right onto my other wire. So the feeder wire will come in at this point and to electrify this whole thing. Um, the, uh, the fencer that we have has an electronic um, control on it where he can reach out and touch this wire and hit off. And it'll turn the power off to the whole farm. Otherwise, if you didn't have that type of charger or controller, this would be a real good place to put a switch. You come out here, you can turn that switch off and it'd kill the whole farm, except for everything back to the road. But that's the beauty of having the controller that has the on-off switch on it. It sends a signal back to the power box. Boom, it's dead. Pretty handy tool to have. Okay, now we've got the gate in. Let's see how this works. So we got a truck coming, or the cows need to come through here. Now, when you open, when you open this up, that's hot. It's the only way it'll work. If you hook on cold and you open this thing up there's no way to make it hot on this end so your power has got to be coming from the opposite direction so you are working with a hot gate but what I do is I just bring it back because we'll have a wire coming this way and on this wire I'll have a hook where I can set this on the ground and I just hook it and so it just sets here like this you don't really want that thing laying on the ground popping so we'll have a, a post set here with a hook. You set it in there. It's going to look a lot like that over there. It's just a miniature version of it. Okay, so I'm going to close it back up. The animals go through. There it is. That worked pretty good. It's a fast, economical way to make a gate. It's non-conductive. You could set a couple of great big posts here and put you a couple steel gates and you know that would work but it's going to cost you my gosh you know good steel gates are a couple hundred dollars a piece and you got to put an H brace on each side to hold them up. Once you get your animals trained on hot wire this is sufficient right here. They're not going to go through that. Uh, the reason we ran a ground wire this ground wire is going to be run all the way around this farm and all the way back to the charger. It's dry out here, folks. When an animal tries to go through here, if his feet are real dry, and you haven't had a rain for like we have in this area for a long time, their, their hooves get dry enough that they're not grounded. And so they can hit that wire, and it may have 8,000 volts in it. They're not gonna feel it. They will when they touch that one. If that's grounded, that's gonna be going back to a whole set of ground rods down here. I think we've got nine ground rods, six feet long. So when that animal touches this and this one trying to get through there, it's like he's standing on that ground field down there. He's going to feel it. He's going to feel all of it. So that's why that wire is being run. Um, I was telling the guys uh, earlier on this project, if they ever want to try and run sheep on here, that's the beautiful thing about the timeless. We've already got the corners in. You could run more strands here. You could run another one right here. You can run another one right there, and that would be a very effective sheep fence. You're not going to have sheep go through that. But right now, we're focusing on, on cattle. Sheep might be something we look at later on in the year. But right now, it's looking like, you know, we'll start grazing like on this section. We've got a water point right down there, and we're just going to rotate the animals around this L shape all the way around. And the corral system is going to be set up over here. And the reason I've got the corral system right here, we can see the pile of corral panels. We've got some gates there, sorting gates, is we've got water right there. Right there where that red flag is. So we can clip in a water tank, put it in the corral. If you've got something there that you're going to ship or send off to processing or whatever, you've got a water source. Folks, if you build a corral, make sure you've got water there. 
because you don't want to be carrying it if you don't have to. You know, so when you design your farm, think about that. You need water somewhere close to that corral where you can put a hose out there and put your livestock tank in. So with that, I think I'm going to sign off and uh, we're going to be talking a little bit more uh, with uh, Karen and Ricardo about uh, the whole design of this system, what we're trying to do in the history of this whole area. Uh, Karen's a, <clears throat> Karen is a treasure chest. She's been around this area. She knows the history of it. That's going to be a good one. So with that, I'm going to sign off. Hit that subscribe button on the way out and the like. I'd appreciate it. We'll see you all down the road.